What up? Hello, Stuart. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm still great. Good. Me too. The series of videos from the beginning of them up until this point now, I have been great the entire time. <laughs> oh, Look at you with your backwards hat. You like that? Like life that? changes. Hey, life changing. changes. Big changes here. Good stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, just some more like, you know, frequently asked questions that we get uh, on phone calls, try to just make it easier and, you know, for, for you guys to understand uh, who we are and how we do business. Um, so we're just going to kind of list some stuff out that we get asked regularly. Uh, hopefully these are questions that you kind of have in the back of your mind that will be answered for you. Uh, so first um, we get asked a lot, you know, um, are most of your buyers out of state? or can we buy from out of state? And the answer is yes. I would say probably 95, 98% of our buyers are out of state. 90, 99, I would 90, say 99. 99.2. We, we I think we've had right? one buyer that lives in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of our people are out of state investors. Um, a lot of them come through you know, referrals in our network. Uh, quite a few military and veterans because of just who we are and our background and, and you know, friends of friends telling people about, it, um, which is a follow on question. Can I buy if I'm not in the military? And the answer is always yes. We, we want to help as many people as we possibly can, um, you know, buy cash flow in real estate and, and support them. So uh, yes, you can buy out of state. Uh, yes, you can buy if you're not in the military or, or a veteran um, or have any association to military whatsoever. Uh, for some reason, we get uh, asked that a lot. Um, next question we get is, uh, you know, where are we buying in Milwaukee? We talked about Milwaukee in our last video, but specifically we get asked, you know, about the, the location, the neighborhoods, the class. Um, Dave, you want to you wanna answer that? Yeah, sure. You know, we focus on really pretty small areas. We predominantly buy in two zip codes. We'll venture out of those, assuming that it, the properties hit our criteria. Those are very generally speaking, um, we're looking for houses that are appealing to renters. So whether that's the layout of the house or the storage capability, how many rooms, all that kind of stuff, we take all that into consideration. We have a, a kind of a standard that we're looking for, but we will, will occasionally deviate if, um, if the numbers work and the the marketing plan is is sound. We also never look in high crime areas. It's always low crime. That's a big um, a, a big detractor for us as well. Is if it's in a high crime area, we will not buy it because ultimately we'd be turning over a problem to you, and that's just not what we're about. So low crime, you know, stable areas, nice neighborhoods, neighborhoods that we always like to say that we'd be happy to uh, live in these rehabs once we're done with them. Uh, those are the neighborhoods we're looking at. Mostly C class. Uh, you know, I'd say C plus uh, type neighborhoods, very blue collar and renter heavy. And those are, that's very intentional. Uh, we want markets and, and neighborhoods that people are going to, uh, the preponderance of people are going to rent and they're going to rent for a long time. And we've seen uh, a number of different cases where folks will rent multi-year leases and stay there for, I mean, make it their home. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Yep, I think that's definitely the sweet spot. Um, all right, another question that uh, we get asked a lot about is um, just uh, the rehab in general. You know what what we do on our rehabs and you know how extensive that is. Um, you know, for for us, uh, what's super important and some lessons learned that we've talked about on future or uh, on past videos is um, we want to make sure that that uh, you know, your, your property is not going to have any major capital expenditure type uh, repairs um, you know, right after you buy it. Uh, that happened to me, I had to put two new roofs on houses like within two years of owning a property. So you know, what we tell our contractors and our, our, um, our uh, project manager is uh, when they walk a property, if there are capital expenditure type items that have less than a 10 year lifespan, we're, we're gonna replace it. You know, so that's roof, furnace, air conditioning, um, water heater, uh, any, anything that, that's going to cost, you know, it's going to be a big expense item that you need to save for, for a capital expenditure, um, we're going to replace it. And, and that's, that's gray. And so, you know, there, there are some mistakes that we've made in the past. Um, but uh, we, you know, one thing that, that we're all about is, is uh, uh, you know, 
cover in our own mistakes. And so if that's something that comes up, uh, you know, we'll definitely talk about it and, and make sure um, it's done it's done right. Um, and then also it, cosmetically, we're gonna do, you know, kitchen, new kitchens, new baths, new flooring, new paint, new appliances, new lighting. Mama G always puts an amazing light fixture in our properties. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, we want to make our houses, the storehouse product, uh, the best looking house on the block. And uh, we've kind of made a name for ourselves where there are tenants, there are renters that want storehouse rehabs. So um, anything I miss on that, Dave? No, I think uh, you hit all the, the high points. We're also very transparent. We will give you a statement of work with, as part of the package uh, when you buy an investment property from us. We'll give you videos, uh, progress videos, typically uh, a before, kind of mid term and, and after. And uh, it's also important to highlight that we cover our work. So we'll warranty the stuff that we touched that we did for uh, the first year. So if something happens, uh, just, you know, either coordinate with us directly or through property management, and we'll ensure to get somebody out there and, and take care of any issues that arise on, on work that we've done. So um, we're very passionate about making these beautiful homes for people to live in. It's not just about the investment and the cash flow for the investor. It's about creating uh, something that that the that your future tenant can be proud of because we all want that. So it's a big part of our business. Yeah, um, that brings us kind of to the next question that a lot of people ask about is just property management in general. Um, you know, I get asked a lot if uh, we own the property management company, if it's in-house or if it's... Uh, you know, another, another company. And uh, David and I decided long ago that, that we didn't really want to be in the property management business. Uh, one, because we just don't have the capacity for it. Two, we don't have the systems for it. And three, we don't have um, the, uh, the number of doors really that makes sense uh, to, to own a property management company. Uh, so we, uh, we've tested a few different property management companies. Uh, we use uh, smart assets uh, realty and they manage our properties for us um, they're fantastic and um, you know at the end of our rehab we we turn it over to them um, so um, more than likely you know the expectation is that you use smart assets however if uh, you know you live in milwaukee and you have other properties and you want somebody else to manage your property it's, it's by no means an absolute uh, deal breaker requirement that you have to use the property management company that we recommend. It's a recommendation only. Um, we recommend them because we believe in them and they rec and they uh, manage our properties. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we turn it over to them. But if you, so you want to use somebody else, then just needs to let us know ahead of time. Um, you yeah, know, two points to that, Stu. Uh, first, the... I want to also emphasize at one point you and I were considering having a property management business. Uh, I went out to Milwaukee to look at a different, a couple different property managers and going into smart assets, looking at their team and the technology that they use to manage everything from obviously the uh, tenants and tenant placement, marketing and all that good stuff. But also they, they literally use GPS to track their, maintenance people so that they can most effectively divert them to the, the, you know, if a maintenance man is in the area and is close to a property, um, they, they will literally use technology to look and see where all their folks are and divert the closest person that has the best cap capability. Like all these things were tools that you and I are, we're nowhere near being able to establish that for property management. And so we felt from your, you, the investor's perspective, you are better served by someone like smart assets than what we could put together in the near term, which, um, you know, absolutely fell in love with that company. And then I also want to highlight it. It's, it's to your benefit. We chose to do it the way we do it to, to the investors benefits. So it's not that we want to partner with smart assets and force you into a property management. What we aim to do is when we sell you the house, that there is a tenant or a lease in place and that, that that investment is already cash flowing and we can do that through coordinating before the rehab is even done to get them in there and market it so ultimately if we just know early in the process you want to use somebody else that's awesome that's great no no issues but the reason the thought behind um partnering with them early is so that by the time you purchase a house you already have a tenant in place the performa is not performa anymore it's an actual 
numbers that are coming in and, and the cash flow that's being generated. So it's all to your advantage. I mean, you're really good at teeing up the next question that comes up. Um, hey Amen. The next next question is, is the pro forma and the rental analysis and how we run our numbers. Um, I, I would I would invite you to go to our website if you haven't already and go to the properties page and every property that we have advertised on there, uh, we do a rental analysis video. Uh, we use the Bigger Pockets rental analysis tool. It's it's you know it looks good. It's super easy to follow, um, and we use the same numbers pretty much every single time. Um, you know we use seven uh, percent for vacancy rate, and that comes you know from property management, kind of what they're what they see on on an annual basis. Uh, we use uh, five percent for uh, maintenance uh, expenditures. Uh, you are going to have maintenance. Uh, it does come up. Some of these houses are, you know, built in the 1950s, 1960s. Even though we do a rehab, you're still going to have some maintenance that comes up. And, and, and you know, turnkey providers that say you're not going to have any maintenance because they just rehabbed it, it's just wrong. Uh, you're going to have maintenance. So we, we, we uh, want you to account for that. 5% uh, for capital expenditure items. Although, you know, we, we try to replace it as, as much as we can. Um, if you own this house long enough, you're going to have to put a new roof on eventually. You're going to have to put a new water heater on eventually. So we want you to save for that in the future. So that's kind of like a, a, a soft uh, expense at this point. 8% um, for property management is what we, um, what we use on our pro forma because that's what smart assets management charges. 8% is really good for, for a management fee. You know, the average is 10. Um, and so they're really good uh, with, with those fees. Um, and then, uh, and then for your, you know, we recommend uh, doing a, a 30 year fixed rate finance loan. Um, it's, it's hard to tell what you're going to get as an individual buyer. Uh, so we try to be conservative based off of uh, what we're seeing from rates. Uh, currently, we're putting four 4.5% interest, which uh, most of our buyers are getting way better than that because rates are so low. Um, but again, we want to be conservative with those numbers. So uh, you know, we're, we're shooting for, you know, a good return on investment, good positive cash flow uh, with all those expenses in place. Anything I missed yeah, on that and one? It's important. No, it's just important to highlight that uh, we are very, very intentional at running our numbers extremely conservatively. And what that boils down to, and this is not an attempt to badmouth any way that other folks may run numbers, but there are a lot of companies out there that will leave out a lot of those expenses that Stu mentioned and they'll do a simple calculation, a cash on cash, a return on investment. You put in this much, and this is going to be what you get back based on a monthly rent. We believe that that's wrong, uh, simply because it's a lot more complicated than that. And you can you can really m manipulate your numbers to make them look uh, how you want them to look. And again, I'm not saying that it's uh, morally wrong to do that. I'm just simply saying that we have a, a bit of a higher standard in what we want the reality to look like. So our numbers are very, very conservative. We're huge believers in under promising and over delivering. And so when you look at our numbers, just keep that in mind that, um, you know, if you're getting a 4.5% right now, uh, you, you probably need to look at another lender. Uh, just for context, I'm refinancing my Milwaukee properties uh, with the company that we use, CMG. And I'm doing a cash out refi as well, which uh, tends to be a little bit more expensive and I'm getting a 2.99 rate. So, you know, th that's just to your benefit when you get better numbers than what we analyze, uh, it's, it's hundred percent to your benefit, which is our preferred way to do business. Yeah, that's pretty good, man. 2.99. Yeah. Real good, good stuff. Um, all right. Next question that we get asked a lot is, uh, just about the appraisal and inspection process. Uh, so we we pay for um, an inspection uh, every single time, and uh, we will send that report to you as as the future buyer investor on that property. Uh, you know, we will pretty much guarantee that we're going to fix anything that uh, that is hit on the inspection from uh, a safety item, or we, we absolutely will do that, and then fix anything else that comes up. You know, highlighted red. Uh, but if there's something that you see that um, we didn't mention that we are planning on fixing or repairing uh, from the inspection report, and we absolutely want to talk to you about that and make sure that you're comfortable uh, with that report and, and happy with what you see. Um, the appraisal, uh, you know, if you're getting a loan, 
Um, every lender is going to require an appraisal. Uh, we're totally cool with that. Um, you know, we we base our sales price a lot off of um, you know comparables in the market, and we never want to overcharge or inflate uh, a sales price um, with the expectation that you're going to bring more money to the table if it doesn't appraise. Uh, that's just not how we operate. Um, so, uh, you know, knock on wood, we've been really uh, successful so far with appraisals. Uh, almost every single one of our houses does appraise. Um, but it has happened in the past where, um, you know, an, an appraiser comes in and thinks differently about something or chooses different comparables or, um, you know, we have had a few in the past that, uh, that don't appraise. And uh, Dave, you want to talk about kind of what happens if it doesn't appraise? Yeah, absolutely. And again, we want to be 100% transparent. So if if it's in the ballpark, a lot of times we'll just renegotiate the price with you. And again, we are very passionate about not, um, you know, having any surprises at closing where you're going to bring additional cash that you didn't anticipate or expect. That's not, uh, as Stu said, that's not the way we do business. Now, I will, I will say that that is exactly the business model of some turnkey uh, some turnkey providers, and, and that's okay. That's how they choose to do it. And there's an expectation. It's a fair question to ask. It's a question that I always ask anybody that I'm going to do business with is, hey, what's your appraisal rate? And what happens if a house doesn't appraise? And I think uh, a lot of times you may be surprised by that answer, but it's something that you you, you absolutely need to ask that question. Uh, and then there have been situations where the appraisal was just completely crazy out of left field, didn't make any sense. And in those situations, we actually ended up uh, still negotiating the sale of those houses with with the buyers, and they got a phenomenal deal. and And we thought that we we uh, uh, got a good deal as well. They were happy, so we will have a conversation when if if that happens to be the case. Uh, otherwise, we'll just um, you know pass on that one and, and give you the next available property and and uh, move on from there. So it's uh, it's something that we're very transparent about and also passionate that we're not. We're not putting you in a position where you have to make that tough decision and, and figure out how to find additional funds. Yep. Um, all right. Last, last question that I have here, unless you can think of anything else, Dave, is, um, you know, how else can people invest with us um, through Storehouse? And, you know, we, we do just, we, we love offering opportunities and that's super important to us. Um, and, you know, we have a long waiting list. And so a lot of people uh, don't want to wait a year and a half to buy a turnkey rental property from us. So, you know, what we do like to offer are some other opportunities. Um, we use uh, primarily um, private money uh, to help us and allow us to go pay for these distressed properties with cash. It allows us to be competitive in the market, to be able to close quickly on houses. And so, you know, we, we partner with investors that have capital, that have private money that they lend to us uh, on the front side so that we can go buy these houses and rehab them. Uh, so we are always uh, interested in partnering with people that, uh, you know, may have some money just sitting in a bank account, savings account, earning very little interest, pretty much losing money because of inflation, or if they have money sitting in a Roth IRA or a 401k or, or even a TSP, you know, you can pull out money from a TSP uh, for those in the military and, and do private lending. And we offer uh, really good returns on, on your money. Um, and uh, it's, it's fairly short term. You know, our typical turnaround process on a rehab is three to six months. Um, and so you could probably lend money to us a couple times over before you actually come up on that buyer waiting list. And so that's what happens a lot is uh, we have uh, investors that want to be on that buyer waiting list. Um, but because it's a year, year and a half, and they do have some money that's just sitting in an account doing nothing, they'll lend money to us. We secure it with a first position uh, mortgage. So it's tied directly to the property. So worst, worst case scenario, if we couldn't pay you back, you could foreclose on us and take over the ownership of the property. Um, How many times does that happen, Stuart? Uh, zero. Okay, that's good. We would yeah. bend over backwards to ensure that that did not happen. Um, but again, it's always about being conservative and ensuring that our investors are protected. And that's why we do it that way. 
Yeah, and I'll say that um, you know I gave a um, a webinar, uh, kind of a educational video to another group of, of investors that were interested in private lending. Um, it's about forty five minutes long, so if you're interested in that, uh, I'm happy to send that link over. Uh, you know, you can just reply to this email or, or set up a call with us. And if you have more questions about kind of the private lending side, uh, I, we can send you that video uh, of how we operate and how we do business uh, on, on the lending side of it. Uh, lastly, um, we, we have done and are continuing to do some bigger commercial type properties. Uh, we, are, we are passionate about uh, Colorado. Uh, that's where I currently live uh, in, outside of Denver, Colorado. Uh, David plans on moving back to Colorado. We've partnered with another amazing team uh, locally here in Colorado. Uh, we, we purchased a mobile home park um, back in August of 2020. Um, and so, and we're looking for more opportunities like that. Um, so, you know, we are doing multifamily commercial uh, syndications where we, we pool money together from investors. Um, there are some caveats to that. Uh, we have to prove that there is, is an existing relationship. So if, if you're new to Storehouse, if, if this is the first time you've ever seen or heard about David and I, um, we probably couldn't offer that opportunity to, to you. But as we continue to build a relationship, have conversations, meet in person, do some handshakes and some hugs, grab a beer or coffee together, uh, you know, get on the phone, get on Zoom. Uh, as we build those relationships out, um, then we can probably show that uh, we have an existing relationship and we can offer opportunities like that to you in the future. Uh, so if you're interested in that, um, being a part of a bigger commercial multifamily type syndication, uh, specifically in Colorado um, or, or future markets, wherever we choose to go next, um, you know, please reach out to us and let us know that you're interested in that. Uh, what else, Dave? Is there anything else that uh, you get questions on? I think that about covers it. I know this Good is stuff. Good yeah, this, stuff. This is a long video. Um, we do have some other FAQs that are posted on our website um, that talks more about like, you know, the, the, the process, uh, some questions about, uh, you know, guarantees, uh, rent guarantees, uh, rehab guarantees, you know, some of that stuff. Uh, but again, please reach out. Um, if you just want to get on the buyer waiting list, you can just reply to the email that, that you received. Tell our, our admin team that you want to be added to the wait list. Uh, if you want to schedule a call, uh, there'll be you know, some Calendly links uh, to, to Dave and my schedule that we can jump on calls and answer more questions if you're interested in lending or commercial deals or just more have more questions that we didn't answer in this set of videos. Uh, feel free to reach out. Um, I think that's it. Um, we Yeah, buddy. Can't wait uh, to uh, you know to to meet new people, uh, help serve, um, and uh, and yeah, let's let's uh, let's go fill our storehouse. Let's crush it, crush it today. See ya. See ya.